Hi folks! In this video I'm going to show you how I made these large metal posters using my P2 engraver and auto feed conveyor from Xtool. In order to use the conveyor I first needed to install the riser base for the engraver, which increases the workpiece height from 2.7 inches to 8.4 inches for engraving large materials without the conveyor, and it raises the laser head to match the conveyor height when it is attached. It also has a convenient storage compartment built into the side to hold tools and accessories. The base does need to be assembled, but Xtool's instructions are pretty clear on how it all goes together, and it only took me about 20 minutes to finish. The first step was to assemble the left side structure by fastening the left panel to the corners, and then fastening the support post to the guide rail panel before attaching them to the corners as well. The right side structure is put together in a similar way, except it includes a door for the storage compartment. After the left and right side structures were assembled, I set the front and back doors between them before securing them together with the brackets and rear cover panel. Next my father helped me lift the 100 pound P2 engraver onto the base and then I removed the slats and base plate to prepare for installing the auto feed conveyor. The auto feed mechanism is all assembled but the conveyor rails do need to be put together, but they just click together in seconds so setting this up only took a few minutes. Xtool provided enough rails to build a conveyor that could handle up to 10 foot long material, but I only have enough room on the work table for a couple of sections. Later on I'm going to build a permanent table for this in another area of the workshop where I can set up the entire kit. The spacers are included to change the height of the auto feed if you want to work materials that are 8mm or more in thickness. If you're working thinner material then the spacers aren't needed. They also provide spacers for the risers for the same reason so you can keep the conveyor lined up with the auto feed properly. The guide rails on the riser panels allow you to set the base plate for different material thicknesses and processing modes. The instruction manual provides a guide for determining exactly where. To use the conveyor, the base plate needs to be installed on level 2A, with approximately 10 centimeters sticking out of the front of the machine. After the base plate is reinstalled, the auto feed can be installed above it. Once the auto feed was fastened in place, I attached the risers to the rails and then attached the rails to the auto feed. The outfeed rails for the back of the machine have a laser symbol on one end that attaches to the auto feed to indicate where the laser's working area is and help prevent from installing them backwards and causing damage. Next, I secured the exhaust hose away from the outfeed conveyor with the provided cable tie clamp. Then I connected the auto feed to the P2 and loaded a 2 foot by 3 foot aluminum sheet into the auto feed. The bottom rollers in the auto feed have a rough surface to grip the bottom of the workpiece and feed it into the engraver. 
and the upper rollers are spring-loaded to apply pressure on the top of the workpiece to keep it tight to the bottom rollers without causing damage. The instruction manual provides a guide for how to adjust the pressure for different material types and thicknesses, and the different marks that appear above the center roller while you're adjusting the pressure can be used to match with the suggested setting in the user guide. Once everything was set, I turned the engraver on and connected to Xtool's Creative Space software on my PC. I then switched to conveyor mode, refreshed the camera so I could see the workpiece for positioning, then imported the image that I wanted to etch and aligned the top of it in the laser's work area to match with the workpiece. Then I increased the sharpness by 25%, set the laser power to 20%, the engraving speed to 150 millimeters per second, and the line interval to 160 lines per inch, then set it to Jarvis mode and sent the G-code to the engraver to start engraving. One thing I like about working with these aluminum sheets is that they're easy to cut to size. All that you need is a utility knife and a straight edge to score the sheet a couple of times, and with a couple of folds back and forth you can break the waste piece free. As you can see, the poster turned out really nice. I opted to mark the white paint for this one instead of removing it completely because marking it would contrast with the paint better than exposing the bare aluminum wood. But I also made a black poster and removed the paint completely to expose the aluminum below, and I think it turned out a lot better. I'm going to make a few more of these featuring the projects that I've done on the channel and hang them up in the workshop after I get a new coat of paint on the walls and figure out a better layout for the new machines. But that's it for this video, folks. I put links for the P2 engraver in the video description below in case you're interested. 
If you enjoyed this video, then let me know with a thumbs up or a comment. And be sure to subscribe because in the next video I'm going to review Xtool's brand new S1 engraver, which is another fully enclosed machine with all the bells and whistles that the P2 has, but it uses a 40 watt blue diode laser instead of the 55 watt CO2 laser that the P2 has, and is roughly half the price of the P2. Until then, thanks for watching and take care folks.